This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. What What's the rotation plan for this weekend? After yesterday's workout, we're going to stick with the same ro- rotation. And um, why, why, why did you decide to do that? Because they both feel good, healthy, no one has a sore arm, no complaints, ready to go. And Molina's had a little, you know, he was, I guess, the guy we wondered about maybe. He's had a, you know, his last two starts has been his shortest. What, what, what are you seeing from him? How do you expect him to bounce back? Yeah, hopefully he does, you know, has a better outing than he has the last couple. Um, but uh, I don't know. He's just got to go out and pitch. I mean, he's an older guy. He's got a lot of weekend experience at this level. And uh, hopefully he'll go out and have a good outing for us. I expect him just to be be a lot better. And you said the other day that you thought, you know, not having midweek games would be helpful and the guys could get refreshed a little bit. Well, what did you see from them yesterday in terms of that, maybe having a couple of days off and how they responded to that? It was good. It was good. You could tell they they were they were excited to be back out on the field. We weren't out there, you know, hour and a half, two hours. And uh, it just seemed it seemed a little different, a little louder. And, uh, you know, I expect today's workout will be the same. And, you know, guys getting ready to play their last, you know, home SEC series at, here at Mom Walker. So it'll be good. Yeah, I might have a couple more. I'll turn back to Oliver. Thanks. Ellis. Yeah, Coach, Mississippi State, obviously Durangolo gets a lot of the, the headlines with their starting rotation, but their other guy, Steven, is uh, leading the SEC in innings, and I think Durangolo's top five in the SEC. Just what's the key to attacking those guys and getting them out of the game? Well, they both are, they, they're both really hard throwers. You know, you just got to stay in the zone. Um, they're awfully good. I mean, that's, that's as good as one-two punch in the league the way I look at it, at least statistically, you know, Stefan, he's, he's been getting after it on Fridays and Sanjo has been doing great on Saturdays real, real well. So uh, yeah, we've got our hands full. We know it. And uh, obviously Gage Wood's been throwing really well this weekend. Obviously not going to start this, uh, this weekend, but uh, do, what do you see his role being like? Are you, you think you might get creative with how you use him, maybe long relief, or do you see him potentially closing some games again, or just how do you see his role down the stretch? Well, we'll kind of let the game tell us what to do for the most part, but he could either be early out of the pen if it doesn't go well, uh, or, you know, he can finish a game for us as well. So, you know, it's uh, he's thrown the ball as good as anybody and, you know, deserves to be out there. So we'll just kind of see how it's going. You know, what's the score? What's the inning? You know, are we, are we up? Are we down? Are we want to, you know, where we're at. I mean, we'll just, we'll, we know what he can do, but uh, we'll see how we're playing and the feel of the game before we make a decision whether we're going to get him going or not. Alyssa? Hey, Dave, I'm curious, do you have conversations with Kendall, uh, being a, being an older guy, about just, you know, reminding him, take a deep breath, relax. Like what are what are those conversations if you have any for a guy right now as you want to get him going when the postseason starts? Yeah, we've we've talked with Kendall a lot. You know, the biggest issue is that he's hurt. I mean, he hurt himself uh sliding head first on a field that had a little too much water on it in the first inning. And he stuck basically and he hurt his he hurt his left shoulder, non-throwing arm. And didn't really say a whole lot about it, although we were kind of we were really worried about it when it's happened because I've seen that a dozen times. And you know, usually something happens, usually a tear, and it pops out, pops in, you know. But uh, you know, when he when he hit the wall the other day in the first inning against Kentucky in the in game three, when the ball went off the top of the wall and bounced out, he fell down. He hurt, you know, it it it's bothered him again. So we're not sure if he's going to start tomorrow or not, but, uh, you know, the pain's starting to go away and then he hits the wall again. And, you know, so he's dealing with that and I just want him to be up front with me and tell me that he's pain free or I don't want to play him. You know, that's my thing. Uh, I just want him to, you know, not have any mental, you know, I don't know, something lurking in there thinking I can't swing at that pitch. I can't hit that pitch. And, 
you know, that's why I'm not hitting that pitch. I'd rather play somebody else. So uh, as of yesterday in, 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 in our workout, he didn't swing. I had him doing some other things, played defense, and he's going to swing today. Uh, he said it's feeling a lot better. So, but we, you know, Coach Thompson's talked with him. Bobby's talked with him. I've, I've talked with him. Uh, you know, he had a really good game on Friday at Kentucky, drove in four runs, double, single. Not so good after that. Uh, so, you know, Saturday probably felt the same way as he did Friday and not much happened. And then Sunday he kind of hurts himself after he had, I don't even think he'd hit yet. So uh, we'll see how, how it goes today. And I know you guys will be back after the SEC tournament back at Baumwalker Stadium, but um, to talk about these guys who are going to be celebrated um, for senior day and, and kind of be rewarded that this class and what this has meant for the team and the upperclassmen that you have here. Yeah. You know, we have more than normal, you know, because we're not, this isn't normal days. You got kids transferring in and out. As a matter of fact, we had a meeting the other day talking about maybe we ought to talk about really what you need to do to be able to be in senior day. Are you a true senior? Are you a fourth year player that's going to sign? Are you a transfer that comes in here for one year? Are you going to go through senior day? And yeah, it's kind of interesting, but you know, we, we've had some of these kids in our program for a while and some are new. Um, it's the key to recruiting is getting the young kids and the key to winning these days with the portal we still believe is bringing in the high school kids and recruiting around them uh, because they know what your program's all about and they can pass it along as they get a little older uh, instead of just, you know, going and getting a bunch of one and one year guys, which they've done well here and we've enjoyed them. And they've been a big part of our team. And, you know, to us, they're Razorbacks forever. And most of those guys come back and work out now if they're in professional baseball, but really, it's the young guys that you can get in here for three years, usually as a minimum at a minimum, unless they're draft eligible and they're that good. Like, you know, like Ben and he was two year draft eligible and, and Wallace and they both did great here for two years. So uh, it, it means a lot. I mean, I'm proud of those guys. Some of the guys are graduating. Some already graduated. Some are working on masters. So uh you know, that's what it's all about. Come in here, and if you don't get a degree, get really close so you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and finish it up after pro ball. Steve? Thank you. Yeah. Steve, you got there? Well, I guess you are referring to me, but uh, Coach, we, we've seen a rash here the last few years where Mississippi State wins an national championship, falls off, Ole Miss does it, and LSU to a certain extent. But the Razorbacks, I guess really since 16, have been a very consistent contender. What do you kind of attribute that to? What's the secret to sustained success at the University of Arkansas? Well, I really don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> uh, really, honestly, it's, it's about the players uh, getting the right kids in here and and then also keeping my coaching staff together. Um, there's a lot of camaraderie. The players know that the coaching staffs, all of us, we, we all get along. We like each other. We hang out away from the field. Our families hang out. Um, I think it, it gives them a little better feeling. Um, you know, we're, we're not talking about we don't have to talk about winning a national championship or, or getting to Omaha. It's kind of expected. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, we just we just want guys to work hard and have some goals. And hopefully that's to play in the big leagues one day or at least professional baseball. So, you know, they they realize that we we work extremely hard and, you know, they have that goal. So that's what they want to do. Um, I think to be good every year, you obviously you have to make sure that your roster can handle your schedule. So you've got to have enough pitching. You know, last year we were very fortunate to get through and have the year that we had with all the injuries. I've never seen anything like it. And we just kept having another guy step up and kind of was mind blowing, honestly. Uh, same as position players. We had a couple of guys that weren't even playing. Next thing you know, they're playing, they're leading us and hitting after three weeks. And I think one of them went to, you know, just start playing when we played Mississippi State last year, Holt. 
he got six or seven, eight hits down there. And we're like, wow, man, I'm, uh, am I stupid? I should have been playing this guy all year. And, you know, so we've had some guys like that that have really are program guys that it means a lot to them. I'm sure Mississippi State's the same way and Old Miss and, they just ran into some rough times there, but to be good every year, it's really a mindset, uh, a lot of expectation and a lot of policing each other. And that's what we have our players do. You know, uh, it's all about the players taking care of the program and making sure guys are doing the right thing. And, you know, they're not perfect. We get it. Kids are going to be kids, but uh, there's a, there's just a, a lot of uh, expectation around here. And I, I don't feel like the kids feel pressure from it. It's just, that's what they want. And, uh, you know, last year we felt like as a team and a staff that we won the SEC West, won the tied for the SEC championship and nobody around here knew it. I mean, it was kind of like we didn't get to Omaha and they, they didn't think we had a very good year and which is, you know, a little frustrating for us as a staff. Uh, but I, I do appreciate, appreciate where we're at in our program there's a lot of expectations and that's the way we want it and the players know that but it's all about it's player driven it's about their mentality and attitude and they want to they want to be good every year and they don't just talk about it they work and get there Dave on Monday you said Fisher was going in for surgery you didn't know quite what it was going to be do you have an update on how that went it's on the good side he should be ready for next season um yeah just uh didn't have to do full tommy john just a little bit of action in there and they they fixed it and uh he should be able to go next january you know he'll rehab and he should be good to go like full bore when the season starts if everything you know stays the way it is was it that internal brace thing that you, you mentioned yes yes gotcha and and with Hagen, um, I remember a couple of years ago when it was when you had Kevin Copps. I remember you mentioned like y'all thought he was going to be pretty good before the season. You just didn't quite maybe know how you were going to use him. With Hagen, did you know that maybe he was in store for a season like this, like even before the season started? Oh yeah, yep, hundred percent. I mean, we saw him work out all summer here. We saw him get bigger and stronger. You know, he was still 19 all last summer. He turned 20 in August. He'd already had two full years of being in the middle of a couple of pretty good teams, a, a SEC championship team and a team that went to Omaha when he was a freshman, and he was the reason we got to go. Um, and then he turns 20. You can just see him physically he's starting to look older. We're watching his bullpens going, wow, this is incredible. And then we didn't let him pitch much. You know, his first outing, he he throws one inning. And in at the end of September, we let him throw one inning. And he struck out the side on, like, 12 pitches. And it wasn't even competitive. And we're going, holy cow. And uh, he was supposed to pitch the next Friday. And all the scouts were going to come in. And there was a few there. And I told him after that, after he threw, I went and saw Coach Hobbs. And I said, I don't want him to pitch anymore this spring or this fall. And then we went and told – told him and he wasn't real happy. We we're like, what are you pitching for? You don't need to pitch. You need to get ready for the, just get ready for the spring. And, uh, you know, they'll, the scouts will figure it out in the spring. So, uh, we knew he was going to have a big year. Do we know that he was going to do what he's doing? I mean, we thought it was in there because I've been doing it a long time and I've had some really good pitchers and I've never had a better one. Jackson. Uh, hey Dave, sorry, I missed the first couple of minutes. So I apologize if this was already asked, but um, you gave the guys a couple of days off. You've talked a little bit about maybe being tired. I mean, could you could you sense any, you know, a little bit of added juice, some added energy in the practices that you've had since uh, Kentucky? Yeah, well, we've only had one, um, and it was voluntary because they're in finals. They all showed up, shorts and t-shirts on the field. Beautiful day. It was great. They had a great attitude. We'll have our second one today, and then we'll play tomorrow. So. Weekend's going to be amazing weather here, which is so good to see after the four or five storms that have rolled through here in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's the end of the season. School's just about out. Most of them are finishing their finals today. It's uh, it should be a, the time of their their life. I mean, this is this is what they want to do: play baseball, and not go to school. 
And, uh, you know, Hudson White's good weekend. Uh, he's, it felt like he's been kind of building to that breakout. What's, what's kind of changed for him, if there's anything you can point to? Is it a mentality thing, anything, you know, just, uh, physically at the plate? Probably all of above. I mean, mentality, feeling good. He's a good hitter. Um, I just feel like that, you know, there's been some adjustments made. There's been a lot of things suggested and worked on, but a lot of times older hitters, they just revert back in the game. It's what they're used to doing. It's used to whether it's the way they have their feet placed or their hands up, down, whatever. Uh, and I just think he slowly made some adjustments that are starting to feel more comfortable to him. And he's been hitting the ball hard. I mean, he had a good weekend at Kentucky. He was one of the few guys. So, uh, you know, we need his bat. You know, you think about him at the beginning of the year. I didn't have Stovall. I was hitting him leadoff. I had a catcher leading off. And I hit him in the two hole. And now he was all the way down to the eight hole. So uh, he could hit higher than that. And he made this weekend. But, um, you know, he's trying to stretch that line up a little bit. But he's definitely made some adjustments. And I think he's physically feeling really good. And mentally, he's probably more confident than he's been all year. Tom? Hey, Dave, the flip side of Steve's question is, uh, so Mississippi State won it in 21, and then they had a couple of nine and 21s in conference uh, and now bounce back. What do you see from them this year, maybe a little different than the last couple? Well, I don't know, you know, their program inside and out as far as age over the last couple of years. You know, sometimes the national championship hangover, just you can't get over it, you know, and it's, you know, it's just something that, it's just the way it is. But, uh, you know, I, I think it starts on the mound. They have two, at least two starters that give them a chance to win every weekend, win a series, get ahead in the series, find a way to win one of the next two. I mean, if Friday that doesn't go good, Saturday they got another dude out there that can get you out. And, you know, with both of them have plus stuff and, uh, you know, high draft choice stuff. So, uh, that's probably the start. I mean, they they really field. You know, they're kind of like us. If you look at their numbers as far as defensively, their our numbers are about the same. They don't give you a whole lot, and uh, that that would probably be with me not looking at statistics. I don't know if they fielded in in twenty three or two, but uh, you know, that's you're talking about pitching and defense. That means you're probably going to be in the game. And they know how to win. I mean, that's a great program. And, uh, you know, fan base is amazing. There's a lot of expectation there. And I, I just think that, uh, you know, if I if I looked at all the teams in the SEC right now, I think all the coaches would say the two teams you don't want to play are Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Those would be in the top three or four, and we play both of them. And that's just the way it is. So, you know, a few weeks ago, they probably said you didn't want to play Arkansas. Now they're probably saying, yeah, Arkansas, they're just kind of they're just kind of getting by. They got their wins and, you know, they don't they don't score enough runs. And once you get past Hagen, you're in good shape. I mean, I can. You know, hey, it is what it is, you know, don't don't hide it. So I talked to our guys about. It. So, uh, but yeah, Mississippi State's going to be a major challenge for us and. I don't know why that happens. I mean, Ole Miss the same way, and Mike and I are pretty good friends, and he shakes his head about it and uh, really comes down. The players, they're the ones when it when it's all said and done, they're the ones that either do it or they don't, and uh, they should get the credit when they do it, and that's the way we feel. I get your analysis. Hey, um, I, I vaguely remember Kendall's slide several weeks back. Uh, wh where was that? It was against McNeese State. I think it was in game three like the last game before we get ready to play conference the next weekend. And it was, I think it was early in the game and he, I don't know, I, you know, probably gave him the steal sign. The guy was slow to the plate or something. And he slid head first and kind of didn't, didn't slide real good because in the first inning, it was just a little wet there. And, uh, you know, we've had that injury a lot, you know, Goodhart had it. It's not to that. I mean, his was really bad, but it was, and I mean, I go back as far as my second year, year with Danny Hamlin, his shoulder, then it just started popping out all the time. And uh, so, you know, Kendall's is not quite as bad, but it's still annoying. And uh, yeah, that's when it happened. 
All right, Bob, you're the closer. Hey, hey Dave, uh, you, you haven't talked a lot about, about Mississippi State's offense. I know uh, Dakota Jordan, he's got monster numbers. I think as a team, they're batting about 286 or something. What do you think about him specifically? He's got really good power numbers and just their, their offense overall. Yeah, he's got like 55, 60 RBIs, 16 home runs. Um, he'll strike out a little bit, but he'll also hit a lot of balls hard when he hits it. Watch out. I mean, he's a big guy. He takes up the whole batter's box and, you know, I mean, he's still hitting almost 370. And, uh, you know, he's a tough one. I mean, you, you got Hunter Hines that can hit him as far as anybody in the league from the other side of the plate. And you got some run scorers mixed in there. Um, you know, they got a few guys that can run. They stole like 55. 60 bases only been thrown out like 10 times or something. So uh, I'm sure they just, they just kind of take what you, what you give them. And if you don't hold them, they're going to go. If you make a mistake, they can hit it over your head. Um, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're a dangerous team. They're very talented. And it seems like they're playing their best baseball the last month. Yeah. And just kind of play off that. I mean, they're four, I've never been very good at math, but they're 14 and 10, you're 17 and seven. So I would guess they're probably thinking, man, we go in there and sweep. We're tied with Arkansas. Everybody's talking about Arkansas on AM, but Mississippi State's kind of kind of sneaking. They're, they're kind of lurking there in the background, kind of, you know, and they're hot. Like you said, just kind of, I mean, it's a pretty big series. I don't know if people realize, you know, they're, it, it could be for first place. Yeah, they're, you're right. I mean, believe me, we know where they're at. Um, we don't feel like they're hiding in the corner. They're, we know right where they are, and uh, they're right on our tail. And, uh, a and probably feels the same way. Uh, it's just, it's it's the end of the year. It's it's pretty exciting. I think if you're a fan, you should you should love this stuff. And uh, you know, hopefully, our fans will come out to the ballpark and watch two good teams going at it that have have a lot to play for. Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code believe that's b l e a v for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts